final item here, Mr. Mayor, is an ordinance to rezone Bell Valley Phase 5, located on the east side of South German Lane, south of the intersection of Farver Lane and South German Lane that presently is zoned R1, and the requested zoning is for a PUD. This was reviewed by the Planning Commission at their meeting on April 17th of this year, and at that time, the Commission voted nine to nothing to send this to City Council with a recommendation of approval as presented. And uh, we have an ordinance to read for this item. It's Ordinance 02334. Um, I'm sorry, I was looking at something else. Where are we? Did we? Mr. Paxton, you're up. Mm -hmm. I had, some, I, had some, I, had, I had something come across my phone that caught my attention. Thank you, Mayor. The request is to rezone Bell Valley Phase 5 being uh, plus or minus 14.27 acres of property from R1 to PUD. The applicant is proposing a rezone from R1 to PUD to achieve a slightly higher density than allowed by the R1 zoning standards. Uh, the proposed now 82 lot development represents 22% increase in density from the original proposed 67 lot single family development. Projected traffic impact is comparable at an estimated 22% increase. Though the proposed development is slightly more dense than typical single family, the allowed uses would still be limited to single family residential. Duplexes are not, propo are not proposed. The public information, uh, information meeting was held on March 30th, 2023, and no members of the public attended and no public comment was received. Uh, staff recommended this to the Planning Commission with a recommendation to consider this request. Um, and had recommended that if approved that the 10 provided PUD plan, uh, plan conditions were recommended. The Planning Commission reviewed this request at its regular meeting on April 17th, 2023 with that recommendation of uh, uh, voted nine to zero with the request forward to City Council with a recommendation for approval to include the 10 conditions that provided in the City Council's packet. And I believe that Mr. Shaw is here available to add, answer any questions. Who's here? Mr. Frank Shaw. <laughs> uh, would you please uh, state your name for the record? No one up here knows you. My name is Frank Shaw, 1315 <laughs> Main Street in Conway, Arkansas. Same and I appreciate you, you clearing the room so I have plenty of time that I don't feel rushed. Welcome, Frank. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> What's that, sir? <laughs> um, I appreciate the recommendation from the Planning Commission. We had a lot of negotiations with Chris and the, uh, um, the Planning Department. And this is what we've come up with. And where we are is 80% um, of our lots are 92% of the minimum size. That's 6,000. We're at 5,500 because our lots were 110 deep. So that's 91.6% of 6,000. So asking for a deviation on those lots, the other 20% of our lots exceed that 6,000 by a substantial margin. The reason we're doing this is price point has become an issue. And when your interest rates go from 5% to 85 you see that you can't produce it at the same volume. We're limited on land and space, and and my developer, my builder, I'm the developer, the builder is having problems with price points due to their rates increasing and the huge increase in product that we have to put in the ground, from sewer pipe to water main and, uh, and electrical conduit and all the work we do is just, since I started this, we're more than doubled cost at my cost. That's a, that's a real number. So we're asking for the passage of this, and it's uh, um, we are ready to go. Um, I'm going to give you some numbers that I gave the Planning Commission in a handout that in the last four years, just this is on property I've developed. Now, they have developed other property. Roush Coleman has sold $51 million of homes in Congress. That's here on lots I've developed. Now, there's some others they've done for other people. Not included in that number are the revenue stamps on the lots they've purchased from me, the impact fees, the sales tax from buying the lumber here in Conway, all these numbers are on top of that. That is just a sales number, and it's from two months ago. Now, they're selling a lot of houses, and there's a huge demand for entry-level houses. So let me tell you this as well. 63% of the homes they sell go to single moms with children. The That's touching to me. The, the places these... Purchasers work, 60-something percent are in white-collar jobs and staffing. Um, the others are just able to buy a house under 250, 250, 270, and under 
is where the pricing is on these. There are no more entry level homes. You know, when we were buying homes, I know all of us, 270 was a big house, right? Well, okay. This is where we are. So we're asking for um, this PUD, and after working with Chris, we worked a great deal on it. Um, and we've been very cooperative. We've had a good rapport. This is where we are with it, and we'd ask you to pass it. And uh, we need to get moving because, but honestly, we've got 30 lots left and they're selling about one a day. I'm just out. Well, I have, I'll answer any question you have, and if I don't have an answer, I'll get it for you. May I say this? If I brought a company in here that was going to do $60 million worth of business in Conway, you'd roll out the red carpet. Developers don't get the breaks we deserve. We get punished. And I'm telling you that because I love all of it. But that's the truth. We don't catch a break. Working with Chris, and it's great. But we don't catch a break. If we were bringing $60 million worth of business in, I promise you, we'd get some help from the city, from the Conway Corp. And we don't. So this is the only way we can do it is to ask for more density. So if we don't get this, then these people that can't buy these houses are going to move in apartments and we're going to have more apartments. According to the sign on Bell Valley, you can get in one of these houses for $1,265 a month. I know if you rent a house, it's going to cost more than that. An apartment's going to cost about as much. So as a community, we have grown 9%, 9.5% 9 from 2010 to 2020. I would encourage us, and I encourage you as a council, to look at our ordinances on development and find some ways to help the developer. I want you to know, I love what I do. I had another job, and I quit it to do this. I like it. I, I really do. I love it. But there aren't many people developing in Conway right now. I'm just kind of having a heart-to-heart, -heart if you don't mind. There are not many people developing in Conway right now. Why? The market is stronger than it's ever been. Why is that? And I, I want to ask you to look over some of your guidelines. Make them a little less restrictive and a little more builder developer friendly. We're not building junk out here. This is good stuff. We don't ever pass a street, fail a street in, inspection. We build our stuff right. And everything that they build is inspected by our inspection department. The lumber comes from the same places, and whether it's a $250,000 house or a million two fifty, dollars the brick comes from Act. The concrete comes from, well, you know, here. And so everything is only up and up, but we're having struggles meeting our burden with the city. Now, Troy's been great to work with. You all all have. But I would encourage you to look at some of these things. I love Conway, 71 years and a half for me. I'm not going anywhere. But as a citizen, I see some of the problems we're having, and they could be addressed. And we could make this a little smoother. And... We're not having any trouble. Nobody's having any trouble. But we need some help. So I'm bringing just me in sales, not counting impact fees and sales tax and employees and salaries, people buying burgers. You know, it's $51 million in four years. That's a lot. Mr. Shaw, Thank you. I, I appreciate it. But let me bring you back to right. where, where we started here. Well, I, needed, I appreciate the speech. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 Counselor, you have any questions for Mr. Shaw or Mr. Paxton? No. I, I would just ask, Mr. Shaw, um, when you have some time, I would appreciate it if you would email me some of your suggestions or thoughts on that. So I, I'm, I'd like to be educated. Really. I know you all are open to that, and so, that's why I'm making yeah, it to yeah. you end of, as a group so I don't have to call you all yeah. at one at a time. Yeah. So I mean, I'd love to hear some email or call me or email me. Or I will. And I know that everyone else would. So I guess procedurally it's hard to meet with you all at once, and so I took this opportunity. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Grimes. I'll be glad to do that. You definitely took it. So that, sir? No. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. The ordinance to rezone Bell Valley High Spot. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt this ordinance. Uh, any further discussion? Mr. Garrett. Ordinance 023-34. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Mr. Grimes? Aye. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Ms. Mel? Aye. Ms. Isby? Yes. Ms. Webb? Aye. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Passes eight to Listen, zero. Thank you all for your time and service and what you do. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Shaw.